it's quite surprising that there are very few books that try to tell the whole story um, from its origins, as I would argue, in the in the 1880s with the the, the first Zionist settlers arriving in then Ottoman Palestine. So I think telling the whole story is quite important. It establishes continuity, it helps you understand things, uh, references that otherwise perhaps wouldn't make sense. For example, the Hamas movement, which controls Gaza, its military wing is named after a man called Sheikh Ezzedin al Qassam. Sheikh Ezzedin al Qassam was a heroic figure to the Palestinians who fought the British and was killed back in the 1930s. And there's lots of things, lots of elements to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict where it really is quite important to understand references to the past. The other thing that I've tried to do, um, maybe I've been over ambitious, is to tell the story of and from both sides. Now this is a hugely contentious issue, it's bitterly divisive partisans from each side are constantly at each other's throats. And it is unusual and, as I say, difficult to try to give an account where the narratives of both sides are reflected. So I've tried to do that because people will have to judge if I succeeded. The third thing I wanted to do was this conflict of over 100 years has some very familiar milestones, wars and peace initiatives, and diplomacy, uprisings, and people who follow this story will, you know, will know those. I've tried to give a sense of other things that were happening. We're talking, after all, about ordinary people whose lives indeed have in many ways been dominated by this conflict. But there are other things too. There are economic relations, there's culture, there's language, there's even the odd joke, surprisingly perhaps. So I try just to give a, a bit more depth that goes beyond those familiar, uh, familiar signposts. Conflict has been of enormous interest to the international community for many, many decades, starting uh, perhaps most significantly with the UN Partition Plan of 1947. But I think the thing that probably matters most of all is that over the decades, and certainly from the late 1980s onwards, there was a pretty broad consensus that the only way to resolve the conflict was for a two-state solution. That's been at the centre of all international diplomacy. You had the Oslo Agreement of 1993, which looked promising at the beginning but ended up as a dead end. And at the moment, under President Donald Trump, there's very little going on and hopes for progress are, are pretty much uh, at, a, at an idea. There's no sense that there's any progress towards a solution, let alone even talks, the so-called peace process of so many years. There's nothing happening at all at the moment and people are pretty pessimistic about the prospects for the future. split between the two wings of the Palestinian movement has been going on now for really for, for 10 years since the Hamas takeover of, uh, of Gaza. And there is actually at the moment there are some signs that uh, hopes for reconciliation are going to work. There are lots of different reasons for this. Perhaps the most significant of those is the terrible situation in the Gaza Strip where two million people live in conditions of isolation, siege imposed by the Israelis, the Egyptians, and of course by the Palestinian Authority run by uh, Mahmoud Abbas in uh, Ramallah. So there's a lot of pressure. There are other factors too to do with the wider Arab world, with the failure of the Arab Spring and the role of the Muslim Brotherhood. So this process is underway. Um, it's getting quite a lot of attention. I think one has to be quite skeptical about it. Hamas is the Islamic resistance movement. Its raison d'etre is armed resistance against Israel. And inevitably, it's quite clear there's going to be a disagreement between Fatah and Hamas over the issue of weapons. So I'm not holding my breath, but what I think you see at the moment is a reflection of uh, Palestinians being in a corner and fairly desperate to get some kind of movement. If you look at polling of both Palestinians and Israelis, you see that there are still, I think, slim majorities on both sides that support the idea of a two-state solution. But if you look at more detailed uh, questions that flow from that, very few people believe it's actually going to happen. And that's one of the reasons why there is such pessimism at the moment in 2017 about the prospects ahead. The two-state solution for so long has been uh, the obvious one. The, the British, uh, long ago as 1937, concluded that there were irreconcilable aspirations for the two peoples who are living in 
Palestine, and the only way to deal with it was to partition the country. Now, different models of that have been around ever since then. The two-state solution is based on that. The, the combination of political paralysis, Israeli settlement activity, mistrust, the weakness of the Palestinian Authority, uh, international preoccupation with other issues, all mean that the prospects of that happening anytime soon are pretty uh, slim. And the outlook is fairly bleak. People are talking about a situation of a de facto one state controlled by Israel where the Palestinians remain effectively under occupation. Some people believe in the idea of a one state solution. There is no evidence that that can be made to happen and no will by significant numbers on either sides to make it happen either.